Let's bring in Francisco Partners CEO, DJ Deb. DJ, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Morgan, thank you for having me on. It's hard to go right before Apple, but I'll try to do my best. Uh, well, we're, we're glad to have you. Um, and, and certainly on a day where in the public markets, we've seen a major rally over the last couple of days. I mean, the Nasdaq's had such sizable gains in the last two days. It's now on pace for its best week of the year. How does it speak to what we're seeing, whether it is public markets or private markets, uh, valuations and how, how investors are approaching assets right now? Yeah, Morgan, we spend very little time thinking about the day-to-day -day movements in stock prices. I know that's what your show and most of the other shows are on. Uh, we focus more on the long term. I would say, going stepping back in time, in, in 2021, at our advisory board meeting in March, in front of all our investors, I made a little joke to start with, because I said that more people had raised a SPAC than had COVID. And to us, that represented the absolute top of the markets. And we made three strategic decisions at that point to sell every company we could, to only invest in companies that we thought could withstand duration, and then to pull our fundraising in earlier, which we did in 2022. Of course, we got some things wrong. We ended up, uh, in retrospect, probably overpaying for some assets and not hedging enough for our debt. But coming into the end of 2022, we actually started getting constructive on valuations. We've made eight investments this year. Valuations today are back to 2013 levels. There is this big giant divide between the haves and have nots. But if you look at the public tech markets today, we're back to 2013 level in valuations. Almost 75% of the market trades at less than five times revenue. 55% of the market trades at less than three times revenue. So even though I think we may be headed into a recession, if you have duration on your side, we actually are relatively constructive on long term what this means for the technology landscape. Okay. I mean, you just touched on it, but you did complete fundraising. You raised $17 billion in two funds last year. Uh, you have more than $23 billion to deploy based off of that. Um, just given your comments right now on valuations, where do you see the greatest opportunities? And I ask that knowing that there are 10 specific tech subsectors that you tend to operate in. Yeah, we're actually seeing uh, opportunities across the board. I'd say the one big wild card is the geopolitical situation in the Middle East. I would say a month ago, I was probably more constructive than I am today. Just I'm not sure what's going to happen in the Middle East and the contagion effects. Uh, but again, if you take a couple year view, we think there's interesting opportunities across all 10 of those sectors. Specifically, a lot of our activity was in doing division carve outs. So, for instance, we bought a division out of Raytheon called Force Point. We bought a division, two divisions out of IBM, the old Watson Health business. We renamed Meredith. We bought the, the Weather Channel or the Weather Company from IBM as well. We bought a division out of SAP. We bought a division out of CVS. Those continue to be interesting opportunities. We're also seeing some opportunities in the going privates. We've recently announced the acquisition of New Relic and earlier this year announced the acquisition of Sumo. Those are in different sectors. Some are in healthcare, some are in security, some are in infrastructure, software, and one in consumer internet. So across the board, we're seeing opportunities. I would say, however, we're modeling that businesses will get worse before they get better, and you need to get to the other stand, other side to make reasonable returns. What are the signals that you're looking for, DJ, that we're heading in that direction? It, it seemed like about 12 months ago there was a bit of a spike in going privates. There's a little M&A going on, particularly uh, with uh, AI-type names acquiring, it seems to me. We're still a ways away from the IPO window staying open for more than a hot minute, or am I wrong? No, you're, you're absolutely right. I don't think the IPO market's really open. We had, you know, the three or four IPOs a month and a half ago, but uh, it seems like it's closed again. We're not optimistic that the IPO market's gonna open anytime soon. I would say, I think the going privates will start accelerating. A lot of public boards and uh, board members focus on 52 week numbers. And as those 52 week numbers roll off, people get more constructive on getting things done. The other hindrance this year in terms of why deals didn't get done as much is interest rates were rising. Obviously, rising interest rates is not good for private equity in general, both in terms of terminal multiples and the cost of debt. But what's even worse is when there's a great rate of change on interest rates. Even if interest rates stay high, if they're roughly flat and the Fed has indeed stopped raising rates, people will get more constructive on this is the new normal and start uh, pursuing transactions. So I'm actually, I think there will be more deals in 2024 than there were in 2023.